Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is how to wire a heat pump thermostat to an air handler and a heat pump. All right, and then what's actually going on? And we're going to be going over the terminal letters, the normal colors, and just the functions. All right. So here we have a Pro 3000 uh, TH thermostat. It's for heat pumps. All right. See, so since you have emergency heat here, that's how you can tell it's for heat pumps. What you have is you have, this is where the 24 volt comes from. It comes from the indoor air handler off of a 24 volt transformer. You have 24 volts on the R at all times as long as your fuse is good. You have 24 volts here and then you have C as you're coming back to your transformer. So then that power is brought from the indoor air handler going into this thermostat here. So it comes to the R terminal. It powers the load of the thermostat face right here, turning it on, find its way back through the C, which in this case is the blue wire, going back to uh, the air handler board right here. This can be called an air handler uh, or a fan coil, but this is the board out of it. All right, there's different heat selections and uh, sizing, uh, comfort or efficiency, uh, cubic feet per minute. Uh, flow and on off delay continuous fan for the G so there's some settings in there that you can set but that is the indoor air handler board so we just described how to power the thermostat with 24 volts off of the air handler now you could not use the C terminal if you wanted to power the thermostat face with batteries right here in the back but you would change them once a year you gotta have enough power to be able to have these switches inside uh, close all right so you don't need the C terminal unless you're gonna hardwire it so here you go you're gonna take the 24 volt power from the R and it's going to connect to the G which is for fan green is fan and the G will then have 24 volts going back to the air handler board to power the G and then it will circulate the air at its lower fan speed I'm going to go over each of these uh, terminals just to tell you what they are. So you have C is common for the 24 volts. B is to power a reversing valve for uh, equipment like Root or Ream who power their reversing valves backwards from everybody else. They power their reversing valves in heat mode. Okay, So that sends a 24 volt signal to power the reversing valve in heat mode. R is 24 volts all the time. L is just an output wire. Uh, you have 24 volts coming off of this when you have emergency heat on. O, o is the reversing valve for most major manufacturers uh, other than root or reap. And what it does is you power the O, the reversing valve, during cooling mode. And so this thermostat knows if it needs to power the reversing valve, which changes the refrigerant flow because of whatever terminal you have selected here. All right, so if you're installing, say, a Brine or a York or something like that, you power the reversing valve with the orange wire on the O terminal like this. All right, then you have G is fan. Y is compressor. It's no longer cooling, like in a furnace and air conditioning system. Y now means compressor. Aux is your uh, auxiliary heating. And then you have E is your emergency heating. So if you're using electric strip heating, you're going to have these jumpered. The aux and the E are going to be jumpered. If you have a secondary heat source, um, if you did have a furnace, you could possibly uh, connect the E right here and not have the jumper. But the problem with that is you would then need some type of way of distinguishing what temperature it is outside and when the furnace should run. Because the furnace should not run any time that the heat pump is providing heat to the system. All right, so this, this thermostat is not equipped with an S1 and an S2. So you, it would be harder to put, you'd have to put extra um, sensors and, and um, relays in if you wanted to try to wire a dual fuel system with a thermostat like this. You would just change the thermostat and you'd get one that has an S1 and an S2 um, on it in order to check uh, your outdoor temperature with that. But anyway, so this thermostat is mainly used for air handlers which is the same thing as a fan coil, that have a heat pump attached to them with electric strip heating. 
which then you're just going to have these two jumpers. All right. This board right here is found in the outdoor heat pump and is for defrosting. It also is able to monitor uh, high pressure switch, low pressure switch, and high temperature switch, as well as a defrost temp sensor. It has a timer on it and uh, a uh, diagnostic speed up terminal. It, can al it also powers the, uh, or actually allows power through to the outdoor fan motor for off of this relay block right here. Anyway, so what's going to happen, I'm going to tell you what wires are connecting in here when you turn cooling on. So you have R comes in as 24 volt power and for cooling mode you have R touching O, R touching G, and R touching Y. So it needs to power the reversing valve during cooling mode so you're sending 24 volt signals back through each of these wires to this control board you're sending it back on G which tells the fan to turn on Y to turn the fan on at a higher fan speed and O because you are actually in cooling mode all right and then what you have is you have Y comes to the outdoor defrost control board telling this board to allow um, the compressor to turn on and then you have 24 volts coming off of the O to power the reversing valve all right, that will get cooling on. Now for heating mode, if you have this thermostat set at say 71 and it's 70 degrees in the house, it's going to run heat pump only. And if it can maintain that and continue to just um, heat up within one degree, it's always going to just run in heat pump only mode and it will not turn the electric strip heating on. So what happens during that process is you have R touches G and uh, y. So then you have 24 volts coming back on the G and the Y, G to turn the fan on, and then Y to get it to be a higher fan speed. All right, but it's not powering the O, so it knows it's not on cooling mode, it's on heating mode. All right, and then you have the Y comes out to the defrost board to the Y terminal, and it's going to power the compressor on. The reversing valve is only powered in in a cooling mode so you're not powering the reversing valve you're only powering the Y to turn the compressor on and it will run in heat mode with the reversing valve non-powered alright so now if you have this thermostat set at 71 and it were 68 in the house meaning that the system is having a hard time keeping up with the load in the building then what's going to happen is you're going to automatically say you have it set on heat it's going to automatically turn on the, it's going to have the heat pump and electric strip heating on at the same time. And that's okay because the heat pump's going to provide heat into the air. It's going to actually reject its, the refrigerant's heat into the indoor uh, coil. Then after that, you're going to have the electric strip heating rejecting more heat uh, into or applying heat into the air. So it goes coil first, then electric strip heating. All right, you should not have a furnace attached to aux because that would actually heat the air up first. Then it would have really hot air going to the indoor coil. And then the indoor coil, you're trying to reject heat from the refrigerant into the air, and it can't because the air is already hot. And what's going to happen is the outdoor heat pump will go off on high temperature limit, and basically you're just going to hurt the outdoor heat pump doing that. So aux should never be powered to a furnace. Remember, this thermostat is typically used for an air handler with electric resistance. So, um, if you're going to power uh, heat, you're going to be running the heat pump. And if we're three degrees off, we're also going to have the R touching the aux. Okay? We have emergency and aux jumper, so it's going to turn on the electric resistance right here on the W2. So these are all 24 volt signal wires telling the system what to do or what not to do. So it's going to be powering, if you're three degrees off, R, 24 volts touching G, Y, and aux. All right. Now, if you were to, and then once, once, once it gets down to one degree again off, so say it's, you have it set for 71 and it's 70 again, then it's going to ramp down to just have the heat pump running and not the electric resistance. Okay. Now, if you were to set this on emergency heat, you're going to lock out the heat pump. 
and the only thing you're going to have is electric resistance running. You don't want to do that you, for efficiency reasons. All right, the the heat pump will will turn on and off by itself, and and the electric strip heating will come on and off by itself if you just have it on heat mode. All right, you don't have to worry about like when it gets down to a certain temperature, like 40 or 32 degrees turning it from heat to emergency heat. You don't want to do that for efficiency reasons. You're going to be paying way too much. You're going to just be paying electric strip heating with a blower motor, basically the most expensive thing that you could, ha that you could heat your house with. No good. All right, so you want to let the thermostat do its job of selecting when it needs to turn on and off the electric strip heating uh, just in order to get you by during those colder times when the heat pump has a hard time uh, heating the load of the house. But you want the heat pump to run because that's the most efficient thing on this system here. All right. So, uh, but if you were to power R to E and lock out the heat pump, that might be because maybe the heat pump's broken. Basically, that's going to be the only time when you're powering R to E, unless you had this jumper pulled and you had some other heat source uh, powered to to E right here. Okay. So that's that. Now. If this defro uh, defrost board right here went into defrost mode because it met the amount of time, see there's a right down here is a jumper for 30, 50, or 90 minutes. This one actually doesn't say 60, it says 50 minutes. So if this system was to turn on and off, um, you know, uh, nine times, and each time it ran it, it ran 10 times, it would have met the, the amount of time it needed if this jumper was on 90. After that, it's looking for the DFT uh, sensor to be closed. So you're going to have that come off of the DFT right there. And if that, if that sensor was closed, uh, then this system is going to run in defrost mode, which is what it's going to do is it's going to turn the outdoor fan off right here to the outdoor unit. It's going to turn the outdoor fan off, and then it's going to hit the reversing valve. It's going to uh, power the reversing valve so that it's running in cooling mode. And what it's going to do then is it's going to be heating up those outdoor fins. Once that uh, DFT sensor reaches 62 to 68 degrees, verifying that all these fins uh, on the outdoor unit are melted, uh, then it's going to open up and defrost will end. But during defrost, you're going to have this one W2. It's sending a signal to the air handler telling, telling it to turn the electric strip heating on. Because if you're in the dead of winter and it's, you know, whatever it is, 28 degrees outside, and you, now you're running air conditioning, the homeowner is going to be feeling very cold. All right. So during that time, that maybe if it's up to 10 minutes is uh, maybe how long it might take, maybe five to 10 minutes. Uh, during that time, it's going to power electric resistance heating. So that indoor coil is going to be cold, but your electric resistance heat is able to warm up the air. So at least the homeowner can feel comfortable during this defrost uh, cycle. All right. So once it does get to colder temperatures, it's not as efficient because it keeps running into a defrost uh, defrost cycle. Um, but um, you don't want to turn this to just emergency heat only unless you're like really down in cold, cold temperatures, you know, 20 degrees or 10 degrees or something like that because you're worried about maybe your heat pump um, wear and tear on your heat pump. But really, for efficiency reasons, you want to leave it on the heat so that you have your your heat pump running when it can, and then you have your auxiliary heating uh, for your your uh, your electric strip heating running only when you need to. So during the day, it might be 40 or 50 degrees outside. You don't want to still be running electric strip heating for your house. You want the thermostat to select it for you. Now you could uh, have other other things added on to this in order to to lock the heat pump out at a certain temperature. You know, you could set that at a certain temperature, maybe down towards 20 degrees or something like that, or 25 degrees. Uh, but just so you know, this defrost, this this DFT sensor could actually could actually close even when it's 40 degrees outside. So you could theoretically actually have the the Heat, outdoor heat pump defrosting when it's only 40 degrees outside and you're asked why is that even possible and that's because the outdoor ambience 40 degrees but the outdoor fins are below 32 degrees because they need to absorb heat from the outside air in order to put that heat into the indoor coil and reject it there so the fins will be below freezing and if the fins are below freezing any humidity 
uh, will be attracted to it and uh, frozen on there and you'll get frost. So even when it's 40 degrees, uh, say it's anywhere from say 33 to 40 degrees, you could have defrost running. All right. In fact, that, that's what's normal. All right. So I just want to explain how all this stuff works and uh, how to wire it and what the functions were. But I do recommend that you just follow all of your manufacturer's wiring diagrams. Okay, this is just one scenario right here. I'm basically showing you how to wire this thermostat into this control board and most um, defrost control boards here. Uh, so, uh, but you do want to just follow your manufacturer's wiring and just make sure that you know which W you're wiring it into or which Y you're wiring it into or, or what have you. All right. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.